Hey everyone, uh, we're back for another tyre test. This time we're here for the Dunlop Sportmax Q4. Now I've got John and very famous X-Road racer, he's probably not X anymore, he's still a racer, Taylor, Taylor Napo here. John is the lead uh, product engineer uh, for Sportmax Q4. So we'll jump straight into it. John, tell us about the new tyre, what's, what's the go? So we were shooting for ultimate performance with this tyre. We really wanted something that would go out there and just give you the absolute most grip. So we worked a lot. We have a new compound in here. We've done some stuff with the factory building equipment. We're actually not using an extruded tread anymore, the cut tread like we used to. We're using what's essentially a 3D printer for the tire. Okay. It's a robot that comes over the tire as it rotates around. It places rubber down exactly where you need it. So you get everything laid out absolutely perfect. Right. Okay, so you have the jointless band technology on the rear, but not on the front tire, is it correct? Correct, yeah. Right. So the front tire construction, we really wanted to keep that characteristic on that feel. That nice stiff carcass that allows you to carry a lot of roll speed through the corner and really gets you a lot of stability under the brakes. Okay. So the jointless band works really well on the back, mm -hmm. and what that does is it gives you a little bit of extra compliance, but we want that nice, firm, uh, solid feeling from up front. Right. So what, what has changed, like, I suppose chemically, what's changed between this and the Q3? Uh, it was the Q3 and Q3 Plus, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in Q3 to Q3 Plus, we ended up changing the center compound and we went to something that was a little bit harder, gave everybody a little bit more commuting mileage, mm -hmm. and we softened up the shoulder just a touch and gave you just a little bit more performance there. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go a few steps beyond with this tire. so. We took the uh, the compound that we had with Q3 Plus and we looked at it and we said, okay, how can we make this softer? How can we give it a little bit more grip? And uh, we still wanted to make a tire that is a non-tire warmers tire, a tire that the guys can just roll off the track. Still has the great, same great warm-up time that everybody comes to love from the Q3, Yeah. Uh, but give them a little bit extra oomph when they're in the corners. Right, so the, the tread's changed a lot too, hasn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah, so the tread pattern, that was one of the big advantages with this tire. Um, you can see we're nearly as slick at the shoulder. Yep. Um, we're still FIM legal, and that means we are within 35 millimeters of the pattern from the shoulder, and we have our 5% line to see that we need. Okay. Um, but we wanted something that was as close to as slick as you can possibly get. Right. You know, we see these sport bikes that get more and more horsepower. The yeah. new the new bikes are just fantastic. Yeah. And so we wanted to give them a tire that really kept up with the new technology. Right. Okay. So, Taylor, that kind of brings me to you. Um, you know, you're relatively new to Dunlop. What was it this year or last year you started working with them? Yeah, I just started in November actually, and uh, right into Q4 as the kind of my first uh, project at the tail end of right. Q4 developments. So. Right. So how had that? changed in, in that time when you started like were there a couple of different iterations of the Q4 before we have this one now? Yeah I got to I got to uh, run through a couple different um, generations of the Q4. Um, we did uh, some some testing at VIR, some testing at um, Huntsville obviously, yeah. uh, we did uh, some stability, we did um, where else were we at? Barber, Barber mm -hmm. was good, um, really put it to the put it to the test at Barber for the Moto America preseason test and uh, surprised myself and a lot of other people, I think, too, with, yeah. the, with the performance the Q4 offers. So you, what was a 28 that you did there? Go uh, off as yeah, 25? it was, uh, yeah, I think uh, definitely in the, in the 28 range, so. It's not bad for a straight tie. No, no, it, uh, it it blew me away. I think we were like less than a tenth off uh, Danny Eslick uh, at the end of the first day and he just got done winning the Daytona 200. So <laughs> I was happy. I think uh, a couple of times we rolled into the pits and uh, uh, we were sitting next to the, the M4 crew and no, no tire warmers went on and they're kind of, they're looking over kind of funny, but. Uh, so what's, in your opinion, as, as the the development rider, what is the best thing about these tires? Like, what is a standout feature for you? Yeah, so, I mean, the Q3 Plus is good. It's got that linear feel, and this, it maintains that linear feel, um, but it's it's just got added, added overall grip, which sounds too simple, but, yeah. um, you know, I think the, the drive grip is, is, is way up, mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of translates all the way around the racetrack. I mean, uh, more grip coming in, uh, less backing in, more grip yeah. on the side, yeah. and then the drive grip, uh, it's, it's not its not snapping at all, it's real uh, real progressive. When it starts to spin, you can really feed, feed the throttle open, and uh, mm -hmm. it just feels really, really racy. Uh -huh. Very similar to uh, to the slicks, actually. So right, cool. Yeah. So this is like third in the line, I guess you would say. I mean, you got slicks, then you have your 
um, DOT race tire. Yep. What, what, what was the model name of that? GPA Pro. GPA Pro, yeah. Yeah. and then this. Yes. That's the next one down. So this is like the raciest street tire that you guys are doing. Exactly, yeah. You can ride the GPA Pros on the street, and I get guys at track days asking me what pressures are set for the street, but it's really tricky because that's a tire that really wants to be at a hot operating temperature, whereas this one, it gives you performance that's on par, mm -hmm. but you don't have to put the tire warmers on. You set it at street pressures. You don't have to run really low pressures, and it really, it's an, a really good tire. Cool. Yeah, so we're not running tire warmers today. Uh, we're just going straight out there. So speaking of which, it's going to get some gear on. We're going to get her a shot. So go and have a run and tell you guys all about it. The four or five hours that we rode today, four different bikes, yep, uh, Kawasaki ZX10R, Yamaha R6, that thing behind me, uh, Yamaha R1 and GSX-R 600 Suzuki. So we got the full sort of spectrum, I guess, of the tyres, um, you know, the 600s were running the 180s, uh, the R1 ran a 190 and a 200 and, this is, and the Kawasaki ran a 200. Initial feelings anyway, uh, in regards to uh, tyres just across the board, regardless of size, uh, regardless of sizes, is the, the warm-up time is really quick. Uh, you know, these tyres, we didn't run any tyre warmers today. These are 50-50 tyres, -50 so the 50% you know, track, 50% road. These are the kind of tyres that you're going to be able to just slap on, do a track day, and then still go out and bang up the canyons and, and have fun. So, uh, warm-up time's pretty critical because unless you're you know ghost rider you're not rolling up with tire warmers on your road on your street bike so uh, that was quite surprising actually how hard you could push and very very early on you could push uh, front tire performance is very very good um, you can really hammer quite hard on the brakes the when you're riding a super bike as well the the rear tire performance does it drops down a bit um, Again, it's a street tyre primarily, I suppose primarily, but it doesn't have the outright grip that you're going to get from a DOT race tyre or a slick. So you have to kind of bear that in mind while, while you're riding. But edge grip is very, very good. Uh, when we rode the 190 on the R1, we then, like, that was kind of shag, like everyone was kind of riding around and having, having a bit of fun. And then we ended up swapping onto a 200 and I found the 200 tyre just calmed everything down much more. It was a much more enjoyable uh, ride at that point. And it also, like, when you are right on side, it's obviously 200, it's a bigger tyre, more tyre on the ground. So when you you'd sort of get on, particularly turn, I think it's seven or eight uh, at Chuckwalla, where you come up over the hill and then down onto the back straight, it's very sort of sensitive, I guess you'd say, uh, on the throttle, particularly on a big bike. Uh, so it would unload a little bit on the 190, but put the 200 on there and things were a lot nicer. The the 200 wouldn't steer the end of the corner quite as nicely as 190. You kind of had to line the thing up a bit more and make sure you're in the exact right spot to be able to pull the trigger. But look, overall, um, the performance of the 190 and the 200 were, were very, very good. Now, where this tire really shone, in my opinion, uh, you know, which is you know, track day pace and club racing kind of pace, is when we put it on the R6 uh, and, and, and the J6 R600 for that matter as well. I think when that, that level of horsepower, that level of weight as well, and those tires, they were beautiful. I mean, I didn't want to get off that, that R6. It's just, it railed so beautifully with, uh, with the 180 on the, on the rear, um, the Q4, Dunlop Sportmax Q4. Really, really good tire. And look, it's not an out and out race tire. You could race it, no doubt. I mean, Taylor Nat went out and did a 28 on that thing at uh, the Barber Test against you know, the best superbike racers in the country on the best superbikes in the country. And look, I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that he's Taylor Knapp and his level of riding is pretty substantial. But it proves that it can do it. Um, I think over the course of a long race, like a 15 lap race or something, you'll see the performance drop off a bit in comparison to a proper race tyre. But look, it's to be expected, you know, like that's, that's what it is. It's a, primarily a street tyre. So look, when we put it on the R6, just beautiful. Perfect combination of power, weight, grip, and you could really smash that front tire. Like brake really, really late, and it just it just loves it. It was really, really impressive. I think when you chuck them on the road, um, 
you know, they're not going to be, if you're just commuting back and forth, you probably want to go for something a little bit less with a bit more mileage. These things are designed for grip. You know, they are designed to get as much out of it as, as you can while still, you know, being, being one tire for all sport bike riders, shall we say. But look, overall, very impressive from Dunlop. They are very, very good tires. I'd like to do a, a longer test on them, maybe over a long term, so hopefully we'll be able to do that for you guys soon enough. But overall, really good stuff from Dunlop. I'd say if you like this video, please don't forget to give us a give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well. You know, we're trying to create some cool videos for you guys. If you have any comments, please in the uh, in the comment section below, we'll do our best to get back to you as absolutely as soon as we can. But everything helps, guys. Right, keep it rubber side down. Cheers.